Hello, fellow IB students. My name is Evan, and I'm currently an uh, year two IB student. As you can see, it's I'm not at the clearest of mine, but it is pretty late. Anyways, um, I would like to, like to explain first why I started this series. Now, don't call me cringe because it is cringe. Um, so I I was reviewing for my mock exams, and I was like, hey. What is the best way to study? And I thought the best way to know you know something is when you can teach it. So I will begin to have a mini series for each of my subjects, which I will list on this side here. And I will try to go through every subject that I take and every unit of that subject. And this time we're going to start with ITGS in HL. Now, for those of you who don't know who, what ITGS is, you don't have to take this course, so you can kindly close the video, leave a like, leave a dislike, whatever you want to. But if you do take ITGS, um, we have two papers, paper one and paper two. Paper one consists of mostly, um, I would say, hard, hard knowledge, where all you need to do is memorization, and little knowledge in terms of um, ethical and social concerns. However, paper two requires um, a much more in-depth understanding of the strands of ITGS, which we, which is the first unit that we will be talking about in like in about a minute. Um, <clears throat> anyways, and paper three will be case study. I will not be going through paper three for now, as personally I don't know that much about the case study anyway, and it's all, it's already February, which is a bad idea. Anyway, so we're gonna. Oh, I say anyway a lot. Gee. Okay, <laughs> let's go to topic one. What is ITGS? What the heck is ITGS? Um. Now I do excuse myself for a bit of profanity in this, since I didn't. I am not the only one who created this slide. As you can see, my friend and me have also also edited this document. So if there's any um profanity in this document, it is simply for humor. It does not mean any personal attack. It's purely for the fact of humor. Okay, so let's begin topic one. So to know what is ITGS, we need to know that ITGS is not computer science. It's not coding. It's not math. It's between computer and society. So in ITGS, we have this thing called a stakeholder, which, like the name suggests, a stakeholder holds a certain piece of the system. You can be a client, you can be a server, you can be a user, you can be a lot of things. You can hold a lot of things. So the people that are affected by the issue or that are affected by the machines are called stakeholders. Now around the stakeholders, ITGS want to talk about the social and ethical significance. So what is the positive and negative impact? And what is the questions that is raised by the system that is developed. And then we have the IT system, which is the information technology that caused the social and ethical issues and how it works. So this is the part where you need to start memorizing. Oh, what is IP? What is Mac address? What is a hardware? What is, you know, graphics card? What is all those things? And then we have application to specific scenarios. So in areas of society affected by a social impact, such as health, government, and businesses. Now I'm just reading off the subtitle here. So what this is saying is that this is not just people, but also groups of people, That is, which is what the area means. So stakeholder doesn't refer to a single, but it refers to, it can refer to a lot of people, maybe even an organization. Now in strand of ITGS, which is kind of like the core of ITGS, we have 12 strands, reliability, integrity, security, privacy and anonymity, intellectual property, authenticity, digital divide and equality of access, surveillance, globalization and cultural diversity, policies, standards and protocol, people and machine, and digital citizenship. Now, each of them are related to a specific social and ethical significance, and they tend to have a trend for different strands to relate to different units of the ITGS textbook. So, for example, when we talk about authenticity, or when we talk about security, we will be talking, the, the, the question is probably going to ask you about database. It wants to hear something, something about database. But 
when it's asking about reliability and integrity, it's probably going to ask you about legacy systems. It's probably going to ask you about um, um, outdated stuff where you say, oh, why do you need to upgrade? Because the reliability is low or some, something like that. I will go in depth later, don't worry. Um, when they talk about privacy and anonymity, they are definitely talking about security. And security is talking about security. So <laughs> certain strands have certain trends that follows different topics of the ITGX textbook. So we will be going through strand 12, the one and one to 12 strands today. So the first trend is reliability and integrity. So this refers to how functional the IT system is in terms of the task it is supposed to accomplish. So it is accomplishing it fast. Is it doing it good? Is it trustworthy? And is the data provided? So how well does the system work? Does it function as intended? Does it fail or does it crash? So does it function as intended? This is kind of this kind of relates to an HR topic called um IT and organization. You know, and then we do does it fail, does it crash? Now this is a bit of hardware, a bit of software. Um, how dangerous are the failures? Do the failure lose money or life? Now that that will be a significant ethical concern. Do the failure lose data? Now data is pretty specific. It's talking about database. How much data is lost? You know, of course. Um, how reliable are the system and the data? So how can the system detect false data? Now that may be an HR topic called modeling, or it may be auditing of database. It can be a lot of things once and one, once again, or it can 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 um, networks de detect malwares. See, that's another thing about reliability and integrity. So, does the system correct the false data? Can the system detect redundant data? Now, when we talk about redundant data, it's pretty specific that we are talking about database once again. I find database to be a huge topic in ITGS that can fit into almost any strand. So, I re strongly recommend you read up on that topic. So, and then we have security. It's the protection of data and the usage of data from unauthorized users. Now that is talking going to be talking about network security or hardware security. So is the system protected from unauthorized usage? That's definitely about security, like the top, the unit security. Um, how restrictive is the security to authorized usage? Now that may be IT system and organization. That may be database that may be security, that may be networks. <clears throat> now, how necessary is the security of IT system? Now, I find this to be a bit ironic because it's always necessary to have security. <laughs> Privacy and anonymity. The ability of a user to control the usage of their own data. Now, listen to what I'm saying. In the, t in the first three strands, we've mentioned the word data a lot of times. Why, why does ITGS keep talking about data? Then we go back to security, we go back to database, we go back to network and software, we go back to IT systems and organizations. These are the big topics of ITGS. Of course, it's always related to data because data affects us. We cannot live without data in the modern age. Like, heck, my mock exam schedule over here is data. I cannot live without that schedule because I don't have it memorized. <laughs> How does the IT system collect and use personal data for a purpose? If so, who has access? Now, this uh, is in the database. I believe, I don't have it memorized perfectly. I believe it's in the uh, database unit where we call it the transparency. So how much anonymity is guaranteed to the user? And, and to what extent should privacy be guaranteed? So maybe some place they don't want to have for privacy. For example, when you are and let's say you're in the voting machine. They want to see who you are. They want to see your voting pattern. They want to see your history. They want to see your crime records, if you have any, which I hope you don't, because that would be a big trouble. And then intellectual properties. Now this, we're talking about software for sure. Software is what we refer to as intellectual property. So they, like I said, there are patterns like machines, compositions, plans, plans, oh, whatever, uh, processes, article and menu of manufacture. Copywriting such as books, music, recording, fine art, graphics, yada yada yada, trademarking, symbol, logo. I mean, we all know trademark is a big thing. Apple just sued Samsung a few years ago for $10 billion. 
if I remember it correctly. And again, don't quote me on this because I'm doing this free script and I'm just improvising. So those are intellectual properties. It's to protect. It's essentially what IB calls no plagiarism, please. Yeah. <laughs> authenticity. No, this is important. It does not mean the database authenticity. Now, in database, when we talk about integrity, when we talk about authenticity or validation, we talk about is the data correct to the real world? Is the form format of the data correct? However, in this trend, it is important to know that authenticity refers to the authentication process. Now, that will relate to, once again, security. So, biometrics, dual authentication, secret key encryption, public key encryption, those things are what we, you want to talk about in authenticity. Digital divide equality of access, this can fit into multimedia, this can fit into software, hardware, this can fit into computer models, models and simulations and networks, this is a lot of things. And I believe the first two pages of ITGX textbook talk, talked about the one computer per child thing, and that will be the globalization and the divide, the digital divide. Now I'm gonna skip globalization diversity because that's a bit cold topic for me. I'm not look at this a lot, but surveillance we're talking about um, networks. We're talking about database. We're, again, we're talking about security. We're and once it, mo most importantly is how does all these things that I've been talking about, how does it cause an issue and how can that issue be resolved? That is ITGS. It's not science, which is why it's not in the science course. It sounds like a science course, right? Information tech, but it's not. So stop thinking it's computer science. I've, I've thought it was computer science for the entire first term and I got horrible, horrible grades. But then I started, I started thinking is it as human interaction between computer and humans. And that's when my grade starts coming up. And, okay. It's a pretty long video, 12 minutes already. I'm just going to keep going and it's almost done. Almost done. Hang in with me here. So policies, we're talking about rules to govern the ITGS, like how, oh, okay, Malaysia does ban this from certain websites. Again, these are for jokes only. Don't take them seriously. Um, so what policy are in IT, you know? What policy caught up to our IT development? There will be network, there will be database, there will be multimedia, there will be hardware, software that can fit into everything once again. So ITGS is not hard. Just memorize some things from each topic and you have a lot of things to talk about. Standards and protocol. Now, these are similar to policies, but they're a bit different. <clears throat> so they talk about how does different standards format, standard format affect productivity in different fields. For example, what is JPEG? What is PNG and how does that interact with each other? What is lossy and lossless compression? You know, this, those are called different formats. And what is the purpose of having different formats? Why is why do we have a GIF? Why don't we just keep uploading .movs? Well, the uh, .mov take up a huge chunk of space, so we take GIFs or GIFs. <laughs> Sorry if I triggered you. And what cause technical compatibility and limitations? Now this we're talking about. Uh, I believe it's IT HL topic IT systems. That will be the legacy software and legacy uh, platform. People and machines. This I find to be a one size fit all strand where, come on, everything we talked about relates to humans and machines. So this, use it cautiously though, because the examiner doesn't want you to keep using this one size fit all answer. So do use this carefully. And people and machine is pretty self-explanatory. So I will not be talking about that. And the last one is digital citizenship. Now we've been, our school has been talking about this for a variety of years. It's, a, it's to basically be a good person online, you know, no cyberbullying, no attempt to hack, no attempt to theft. And then again, that's database, that's software, that's network. So that is topic one of ITGS, the 12 strands. Memorize them correctly and you can, I guarantee you, at least a five in ITGS. Um, if you want this study group notes, I will, I will, I can post it online after I graduate. Um, but then again, I, I'm apologize that I cannot give you guys editing access since this is not my, my folder. So if you want this, drop it, drop your email in the description and I'll email this to you. Um, so next one, we'll be going through hard, through hardware. Um, Okay, I'm going to backtrack a little. So notice that I've been talking about hardware, software, 
network security database um, and IT systems a lot. So for SLs, you guys need to start learning about hardware, software, network security, and database in depth. Multimedia is like a give or take topic, so I would not spend too much time on it, but definitely spend some time on the ethical concerns of digital manipulation, and that's probably the only thing you need to know. And for HLs, you know, just know everything. HL is HL, you, are, you chose this, tough luck. Oh, thank you for listening on my first rushed improvised podcast of ITGS Topic 1, and I will see you guys in Topic 2.